the challenge of the Yukon. King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. <laughs> Driving ceaseless snow made the vast Yukon a blurred mass of whiteness. But even the fury of the storm could not obscure the natural protection of a group of huge rocks that shut out the merciless winds. It was there that two men crouched, guns within easy reach, while they rubbed their hands together for warmth. You picked a fine day to do this job, Manny. I ain't seen weather like this since I come to the Yukon. Listen, Tom, you know the reason we're here. I can't help it if Jim Glynn always drives into Melville City on Wednesdays, can I? Rain, snow, or shine don't make no difference to him. It'll have to be a plenty rich haul to be worth freezing to death. Glynn's carrying the finest lot of furs this side of the Great Divide. I know that for a fact. Well, he's done his last bit of trapping. You see him coming yet, Manny? I can't see far beyond these rocks. He ought to be along. You know, Tom, I don't like the idea of doing away with Glenn. Ain't no other way to get our hands on them furs, is there? No. Well, then. Murder's the one thing we ain't done, Tom. Only because we get what we wanted without it. The other robberies were easy. Yeah. Uh, Any coming yet? Yeah. I think that's a sled along there. But it's too far away to be sure. Yeah, wait a minute. Let me see. Ever since you had that touch of snow blindness, you can't tell a man from a grizzly at 30 feet. Yeah. Uh. I think he's coming, Manny. Yeah. We'll wait till he's alongside of these rocks, then we'll... And we'll open up on him, huh? That's the idea. Got your gun ready? Yeah. Well, we'll just wait now and surprise Mr. Glenn. He's making right good time. Yeah. He's got a good set of dogs. <laughs> what are you grinning at? Jim Glenn racing like that to the bullet... This that... ain't no time for jokes, Tom. Sometimes Take I... Take it could... easy, kid. Here he comes now. Get ready. Mush, you that did it. Come on, Tom. Let's get those furs and get out of here. Watch out for that lead dog there, Manny. He's loose. All right. But I want to get these furs on the wire sled. Look out, Manny. He's going to jump. Oh, get down, you mutt. Oh, let go of my hand. Oh. Nice shot, Manny. Nice shot. That mutt tore my hand. Say, he sure got you. Hey, let me help you. I'll have to put a bandage of some kind on till we get to town. It'll be a while before you'll be able to do much with this hand, Manny. I'll take care of it when we get back to town. Come on, Tom. The snow covered tracks almost as soon as they were made. So Sergeant Preston, heading for Melville City, had no way of knowing that he was trailing a murdered man. But as they neared the rocks, the great dog King sensed death in the air. What is it, King, huh? All right, fella, you lead the way. Oh, you huskies, ho, oh, boys. My King, there's nothing but snow. Nuzzling around this snow won't get... King, there's a body here. So this is why you are. Why, it's Jim Glynn. He must have been. But why? Shot through the heart. And his dog. So they killed the dog, too. And no wonder you were excited, boy. He's following tracks over to those rocks. Well, now I begin to see. Tracks here haven't been covered by the snow. Sheltered by rocks. Those two men were standing here. They waited here until Jim Glynn was practically in front of them before they fired. Jim didn't have a chance. 
If they waited here, then they must have... Well, it's hard to tell which way they went. Well, King, what have you found now? Oh, more tracks, huh? Yeah, here's a bandana. C.N. Hmm, C.N. Now, who could... Newton. Cy Newton. He pulled in here about the same time the two other fellows were here. Now, the tracks don't differ. They're about the same depth. King, we're going to Melville City to call on Cy at the Silver Lantern Cafe. Cy Newton sat at the table in a back room of the Silver Lantern Cafe, resting his head on his hands. In spite of the fact that it was early afternoon, the sun had already gone down. The glimmer of the dingy light thrown from the sputtering oil lamp showed where Cy's Mackinac lay in a corner of the room, wet with melted snow. Oh, Cy, I didn't know you were here. Hello, Manny. What's the matter? You look like you got something on your mind. I have. Well, what is it? Business is good, ain't it? What happened to your hand? Oh, one of them stray mutts bit me. I've got to fix the dressing. He sure tore into you. Yeah, I guess he belongs to one of the trappers out front. Ain't no use lying to me, Manny. <coughs> lying, do you? Yeah, I know how you got that dog bite. I don't savvy what you're driving at. Come on, we'll have a few drinks. You're just down the dumps. No, oh, Manny, I ain't just down in the dumps. I know how you got that dog bite, and I know where you got it. What, what do you mean? I mean we're through, Manny. I've been keeping quiet for a long time now, but there's a limit to everything. What I saw today... Was All right, to... sir, let's have it. Come on. Well, I knew when you was taking cash from the safe, Manny. But I figured if you needed it, that was your business, so I didn't say anything. And you started bringing them low-down friends of yours in here. You better be careful what you say, sir. I'm getting this off my chest, and then you're getting out of here. Even when them mangy-looking crooks was fleecing everyone who'd play a game of poker with them. Because they was your friends, it was all right. And as long as I got half interest in this cafe, they can still come here. Well, if you're smart, you'll get out of the Yukon, Manny. When them fur robberies started, I, I didn't connect anything at first. That is, I didn't till you began flashing around so much extra money. I won that money at poker. You ain't never held a winning poker hand in your life, and you know it. But I got all I can take this morning. I was at Split Rocks, Manny, and I saw what happened to Jim Glynn. Why, you... you... Oh, don't worry, I'll keep quiet. You're clearing out of this cafe. You and all your friends, Manny. You and me are through, do you hear? I don't care if I ever see you again. Not gonna be that Manny and Cy didn't realize that as they talked, their voices took on the loud argumentative ring that carried to the ears of Manny's friends playing poker in the back of the cafe. Well? It's us, Manny. The door opened, and led by Tom Bryant, six men filed into the room, their hands resting on their guns. Cy's appraisal of their worth left no margin for improvement. The dregs of the Yukon stood in that room, and Cy, as he glanced over the lot of them, shivered. Well, <coughs> we thought you this might... This is a private uh, argument. You boys can clear out. They can clear right out of the cafe while they're at it. Are you going to tell them, Manny, or will I? You'll regret this, Cy. I ain't regretting nothing. Only thing I'm sorry for is the day we went into business together. I think we'd better stick around, boys. Now get out, all of you. You can't prove a thing, Cy. I can prove everything I said. That hand of yours I was... told you you'd better get him out of the way. If you won't drop him, I will. What the... My arm! Let go of my arm! You... I'm going to finish you off right now. Drop that gun, buddy. Why, you yellow scum? You... you ain't hit, Manny. Uh, uh... Manny. Manny. No, you don't. You've done what you set out to. Hey, let me see that man. You better take care of Newton, Monty. You still got life in him. Come on, Rube. After you two, help me carry him out. Just a minute. All right, boys. Come on. Yes, King, I know. We shouldn't have let them get away. There's something mighty strange here. No. I think this might be the best way to get to the bottom of it. Oh, my head. It'll be all right, Si. 
Got a nasty bump there. You saw it all, Sergeant Preston. No, sir, I didn't see it all. I saw Manny draw his gun. Next thing I knew, you'd fired and Bryant rushed up to Manny before he fell. Oh, I did it all right. I killed him, Sergeant. Now listen, Cy. I want you to tell me exactly what happened from the beginning. Then when I tried to go up to him, Brian... Yes, I know. Brian's pretty free with his fists. I didn't aim to do no shooting. I didn't, I didn't even think I hit him when he dropped. You couldn't hit the front of a house at ten feet, Cy. What are you looking for, Sergeant? Manny drew first. I saw him. Yeah, but what's that got to do with it? He could have easy killed me and... Oh, well. I guess it's up to you now, Sergeant. I'll just come along with uh, you. Wait, wait a minute. Well, I'm under arrest, ain't I? Well, I can't arrest you. Manny's proven dead. Now, let's see. You were standing right here. I can't see what you're driving at. It seems to me... Uh, you stand here, Si. Here? Yes. Now... Ah, I thought so. What? I've got a murderer to catch, Cy, and I need your help. A rumor spread through Melville City like wildfire. As one man told another, the story gained importance. Soon, even the most incredulous of the miners were repeating the news. Sergeant Preston brought Jim Glynn into Melville City on his sled. Jim, badly wounded, was being cared for in a room at the Silver Lantern, and Cy was held in jail. Will he be able to name the men who robbed him, Sergeant? If Jim Glynn is able to speak, he'll undoubtedly name the men who tried to murder him. The miners and trappers who frequented the Silver Lantern speculated. Was Cy responsible for the robbery as well as for the murder of Manny? Cy confessed yet, Sergeant? Cy refuses to talk. Did you hear the news, Manny? Yeah. Preston's waiting for Jim Glenn to talk. I wonder if Glenn saw us. We can't take no chances. He might have had a good long look at us while we was low on our sled. What do you aim to do? We'll make sure he don't talk. Late the next night, two men approached the back entrance to the Silver Lantern Cafe. Had that key, Manny. Yeah. Sorry, you've been around to change the lock. You <laughs> can't change much when you're in jail. Come on, let's get this over with. I don't know why you're so dead set in making sure you get him this time. You ain't got a thing to worry about. As far as everybody knows, you're dead. But if Glenn talks, I'll be the one to be jailed for that shooting. That Molly hadn't picked him up. Come on. He ought to be in this room. Sleeping. You'll never know what hit him. Go on. Let him have it before he wakes up. You're covered. Drop that gun, Brian. Preston. You reckon I can get up now, eh, Sergeant? Yes, I. You can help tie your ghost friend here. So you're very much alive, Manny. Uh, I thought You that... believed that story about Jim Glynn being still alive, didn't you? You brought him in on your sled. We brought Jim's body to Melville City. Then Cy told the barkeep we'd use the back room here for Jim till he recovered. We've been tricked. You ain't been tricked any worse than you tried to trick me, you low-down skunks. I'd have hung for killing you, Manny. You're under arrest, both of you. You'll have to get me first, Manny. I'll shoot, Manny. Let go! All right, now shoot, Manny. If you do, you'll hit Cy. Go on, Sergeant, shoot! Yeah, shoot. I'm getting out of here, see? I'm using Cy for a shield. Had him, King. Get him, boy. Oh, my hand! Let go of my hand! Here, Cy, you keep this gun on Bryant. All right, King. Oh. That's the second dog to catch your left hand, isn't it, Manny? You're under arrest. <laughs> yes, King, the case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, Brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bill Morgan speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>